So here's a quick video on how I use OneNote and a tablet PC to annotate notes and put them online for students. Uh, I try and use freeware for every po wherever possible, so the only paid software you'll have to use is Microsoft Office. Uh, I use Office 2010. That comes with Word and that comes with OneNote, which is the program that I do almost all of my annotating in. You can annotate in Word. Uh, I just don't bother very often. And you can annotate in other programs. I just don't bother very often. So how would it work? I like to pre-type my notes as templates. So with physics, I'm starting a unit in electrostatics shortly. Here is the lesson that I've typed up, and you can see it's got blanks. We're going to fill it in together with the students. This way I don't have to wait for them to copy out diagrams, but at the same time, they're still not just passively reading a textbook and trying to understand. There's some, you know, working this out together, filling it in, which I think helps keep them active as well. So this is typed in Word. When you purchase OneNote, when you purchase Office, one of the things that OneNote does is it installs a printer driver. So if I hit print to get this into OneNote, although I could, I guess I should show you, annotate in Word if I went to, uh, is it insert? No, it's review right here. And I can hit start inking right there. And now I have a choice of a pen and I can pick a color, black, and I can write in here, and I can annotate in Word if I want to. Uh, I just found I like OneNote much better, and you'll see why in a second. Meanwhile, let's get rid of all that. And we're going to print. And one of the printers you get is one called Send to OneNote. So this is how I get most of my stuff into OneNote. There is one other way as well, but primarily if it's digital, I print it into OneNote. And I hit uh, print. It's going to think about things for a second, because I have a fairly slow computer. It's going to open up one note, and then it wants to know which folder, which notebook, which section I want to print it in. So let me talk about the layout. I have my one note layout, each notebook, think like a binder. I have mine laid out by periods, so block A, block B, block C, block D, block E is my prep block, block F, block G, block H. I, I tried it with laying it out by subject, but I thought I prefer to have one notebook per period, and it, it's essentially my day book as well. So my physics block is block F, right there. And I don't yet have a folder for circular motion yet. Sorry, for electrostatics yet. So I'm going to actually hit cancel for one second. I'm going to navigate to block F. I'm going to wait for a few minutes while my computer thinks about things. Click on new section, which is that button right there. And this is going to be Unit 7, Electrostatics, Enter. Okay, now I've got a notebook with which, uh, sorry, a section in which to print this. Print. Once again, it's going to think about things for a couple seconds. One note asks me where I want to put it. And I'm going to say, I want to put it in block F, in electrostatics, right there. Click. It inserts a printout of the document. And I'm going to call it Lesson 1 Coulomb's Law. Now, I do all my annotating in OneNote, as I said. Uh, this button up here is the uh, full screen button. So if I hit it, this gives me lots of good real estate. I find a magnification of 125% does the trick for me. I've customized my quick launch toolbar, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. These are the things that I use all the time. But you can also toggle the, oh, what do they call it? The task, the, the ribbon open or closed. I like this way because I get more real estate. But if I need to find anything, if I need to draw there's also all your eraser and all your annotation toolbars and shapes and things like that. But I also have my quick launch toolbar customized. So I would then teach the lesson. Now I would start my screencasting software. The screencasting software that I'm using is this program right here. It is called BB Flashback Express. If you Google BB Flashback Express, now you'll see I actually have BB Flashback uh, standard. I paid for the 
standard version, you can survive without it. I've paid for 70 bucks for the standard version. The standard version allows me to edit videos after the fact and allows me to export it to more formats. But I did my first two years using the free version. The free version is free for life. It has a built-in uploader to YouTube and it has a, a few other features. It's difficult for me to show you how to use it though because I haven't figured out how to do a screencast and creating a screencast because I got to activate the screencast software which means I can't show you how to activate the screencast software. But if you Google BB Flashback Express, you'll find it. It's from Britain. It's a nice piece of software. I would then teach my lesson to my class. So my students would come in. I would start the recording software, and I would launch. So we would say, OK, I would have handed out a copy of this to all my students as well. Uh, matter is made up of atoms, blah, 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 blah. Uh, basically, the two types of charge that we call positive and negative charges made up in units of uh, I think it's coulombs charges represented by the letter Q and we would slowly work our way through the whole lesson when I'm done I say hey homework I think you should try number one number three number five number nine etc so my lesson is done in primarily a lecture format then what I would do is I would click out of the full screen, click on the lesson itself to highlight it so this blue rim is around it. Then I know I've highlighted this specific page. File, Save As, PDF. And I have a folder called Notes for Students. It's always in my Dropbox folder because that way I can also access it from home. Right there. And I would save it into Block right there. I'm not going to hit save because this note, these notes are not done, but I would save it into this folder. Now this doesn't get it online, but this gets it organized. So let me show you how I have organized my folder. Dropbox, notes for students. So I have a different inside my notes for students folder. I've got a separate folder for each block. And then once I've uploaded the notes, then every so often I'll drag these into the already uploaded folder that I have also inside of each block folder. So let's drag these guys into the already uploaded folder. Oops, my bad, I accidentally opened all of these. That was silly. Close, close. Try that again, carefully. Move to already uploaded. Yeah, move and replace. So that's how I get my notes into digital format. How then do I get them online? So I use something called Windows SkyDrive. If you Google Windows SkyDrive, you can create a free account, and it gives you 25 gigabytes of storage. That 25 gigabytes comes with various folders, and you can create more folders, but the one folder it does automatically is this one here called Public. The Public folder, anybody has access to if they have the link. So I navigate to Public. In here, I've created new folders by using the New Folder option. And uh, here is my folders this year. Here are my folders from last year. So we're block F. I create a new folder for each unit. So I'm just finishing up circular motion. Let's re-upload my notes from last day. So if I hit add files and I navigate my way to my Dropbox folder and wherever you stored your notes for students folder, block F, lesson seven, and it will now upload it. Now it's going to say, Hey, it's already up there. Do you want to replace it? Sure. It's the same file anyways. Now this gets them online. The next question is, how the heck do I get my students access to this? Well, as it turns out, if I go back to the public folder right here, I can share this folder. And how can I share it? By getting a link. So if I copy this link, click right there, or make it public, use a public link, that one there, copy. This is the link that I have on my website. So I have a classroom website it's called pitmath.com, and this link right here, click here to access notes, lessons, and students. I'm going to assume you know how to create a link, like on a Moodle page or whatever. When the kids click on this link, it takes them to my Windows SkyDrive, and then they're clever enough to clue in what block they're in and navigate their way there. Okay? 
Now, there is one other way to get stuff digitized. This is one of the reasons I like OneNote so much. OneNote also has a clip feature that's uh, under Insert Screen Clipping. I have it hot keyed up here because I use it so often. The clip feature is glorious. It will take whatever program you had most recently opened and let you take a snapshot of the section of that screen. So, for example, maybe the last program that I was in was a web page. Let's go, uh, oh heck, bet. Click right here. And I want to somehow include an image from this particular page. Since this is my most recent program that was open, I go clip. And I'll drag, oh heck, that much right there. And now this is in OneNote, and now I can draw on this too. Or another way that I use this very often is I have my graphing calculator. If I want to very quickly in the notes show the students what I typed in, I would go turn off the inking. Click right there, let's say, because that's where I want to insert the clipping. The last program I had open was my calculator, so if I hit clip, it'll let me take a little snapshot of the screen right there. And there, now the kids know what the heck it was that I typed in. And I usually delete that little screen clipping by double-clicking on it. I usually delete that by double-clicking on it. This is also a nice way to do tutorials if you handed out a review assignment. So if I was doing a review tutorial, let's say... That's wrong, Mr. Duke. Old unit review. And it's after school, and we're going over questions before the test, and the kid says, hey, Mr. Duke, uh, I don't know how to do number 17. I would say, okay, everybody, go find number 17. I would quickly scroll down this PDF file to number 17. What did I say number 17 was right there? I would say, okay, clip. By the time they found the question, I've got it clipped into here, and now I can answer the question however I want to. Hey, Mr. Duick, how do I do number 31? Number 31. Okay, everybody, turn to number 31. 34, a little too far. 31, okay. Clip. And what I really like about this is then at the end of my after-school tutorial, I just ask the kids, uh, how many of you guys want me to print you up a copy? And they can take it home with them. Also, I would be recording this tutorial with the screencast software at the same time, and I would post that online so kids that had to work after school can still get it. So some of the questions you asked me, would you please outline the steps for the information, leaving your computer and getting to the kids? That's the primary way I post them online. Of course, now that I have these here as well, I can email an attachment to a student if I know that they're away or if I just want to nag them, or if a kid, for some reason, can't get it to print or download at home or whatever. Oh, I guess I should show you what the public SkyDrive looks like. So from their end, then, if they click on a file, like uh, this one here, depending on what browser they're in, it'll either open in a new page or it'll download. But if it opens in a new page, they also have the download option over here, and then they can save it and do whatever they want with it. Uh, but you asked me... Uh, how do I have my kids turn in their homework? Is it also digital? I'm not that high-tech yet. No, I still have them turn in pencil and paper homework because I think in physics, uh, unless you have a tablet yourself, trying to draw with a mouse, trying to show work with a mouse doesn't work very well. Do kids each need a tablet too, you ask me? Oh, I would love that. But at this point, I use the tablet primarily as my essentially glorified overhead projector. So is it only the teachers that need the tablet? For what I'm doing, yes. I would love to have a couple of more tablets and have a designated note taker. And I believe you can link tablets together as well and do some neat stuff that's on my list of things to try someday. But right now, I'm just trying to get my students the ability to access lessons and notes wherever they are. And what is the screencasting program? Uh, the screencasting software then is BB Flashback Express. It's a British company. When you download it, it's free to use forever. When you download it, you will get both the recorder and the player. One of the things I really like about BB Flashback Express is whoever writes it knows how to code. The files that it creates are very small. So for example, these are lessons, 60,000 kilobytes. These are hour-long lessons. 
These are hour-long lessons, and they're not in the megabyte range. They're in the kilobyte range. Now, they save it in their own proprietary format, but you get the player anyways. So if I click on this, it will open up inside the player, which I think I can show you, even though my screencaster recorder is running. I think I can run the player at the same time. It'll take a couple of minutes because I'm asking my computer to do an awful lot. On your reference so there's a lesson that I've taught already. Uh, generally, I upload to YouTube, which is file, upload. These are the various ones it has the built-in uploader for. The first time you upload to YouTube, it will remember your information, and then all you need to do is give it a title, put some tags in, and hit OK. I won't upload this one. It takes about 20 minutes to upload an hour-long lesson, generally. Then... I take that YouTube link and I add that to my website as well. So I already showed you my PitMath. Oh, where am I? My PitMath website right here. If they click on Physics 12 links, click here for the screencasts. This is where I put the links to the lessons. So hopefully that answers all your questions. If you have any more, give me another email. I am going to now upload this to YouTube and send you the link.